On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Drew's gonna show us how you can dramatically reduce the time it takes to build projects. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and on today's episode, we're gonna see how you can dramatically improve build times for your Visual Studio projects. And joining me is Drew Noakes. Hey, Drew. Hey, Robert. Thanks for having me, it's good to be here. All right, welcome to the show. So this is pretty exciting stuff, build acceleration. So what is it, why is it, and how can we take advantage of it? All right, uh, so build acceleration is a feature uh, of Visual Studio for SDK style projects, so the modern style of .NET project that avoids doing a whole bunch of work during build that we don't have to do and makes your builds faster. That's the brief synopsis of the feature, and we'll get into how Thanks. to turn it on and how it works. And this showed up in 17.5, right? So it's not brand, brand new, but it's brand new. That's right. Yeah, it's quite new. It's been out for I think, three months now. 17.6 just came out. So mm -hmm. uh, people are using it. You can try everything we're going to look at today is uh, it's available to be to be done immediately. So Cool. So how does it work? Okay, I think the easiest way to talk about build acceleration is to look at an example project. Um, so here we have a solution with two projects. Uh, we have a calculator test library, pretty straightforward, and a library, uh, which is a calculator. And mm -hmm. so here we can see that we've got a test of validating the calculator, knows how to add two numbers together. And we're not really interested in the actual details of the code. We're mostly interested in how it builds. So let's well, do that's build. good because in your ad, you're subtracting. So it's a good thing we're not that interested in the actual code. <laughs> <laughs> Eagle eyes, Robert. Okay. Uh, so here we go. We see we built um, two projects. We built everything. This is the first build. And uh, it took about a second and two builds. So, you know, okay. some projects will take longer, some projects will take less. less. Let's keep an eye on the number of projects that build rather than the time. Um, Okay, so that's the that's everything was built the first time, and now we'll do another build. We haven't changed anything, and you know, in this case, everything was up to date, and the build was really fast. I mean, that was sixty milliseconds. It's, yeah. it's pretty much instant. That's nothing to do should be fast. Nothing to do. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want. Now let's look at the interesting middle ground. So we've done the two extremes: build everything, build nothing. Now let's build something, just a little bit of it. We've got two projects. We'll change one of them. So here we'll add another uh, test case in. Let's validate that uh, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, much the same as 1 plus 2. And we'll build everything. And here we go. We see we've changed one project. We've built one project. And the other project, the calculator li library, was up to date. And the build was you know, it was about half the time that we had before. Yeah, making sense is, so far. Know, what we'd expect. Yeah. Now, let's try changing our uh, bug that you spotted, let's fix that. And do the same thing, we'll build the whole lot. And this time Ooh. it was a little different. Wait a minute. This time we built two projects and it's back to taking, you know, nearly the whole, the whole second here. Um, so let's try and understand why when we change the calculator, does it build two, whereas when we change the unit test to build one. And the reason is that the tests depend upon the library. And that means when we change the library, that's an input to the tests. And so the tests uh, is uh, rebuilt uh, or rather built in response to that change. But we didn't change anything there. And really there's nothing that requires us to do a build here. And, and calling for the build is, is an expensive operation. So it'd be great if, you know, if we change one project, if we could only build one project and somehow accelerate those other projects. And that's what if, build acceleration if is. only there is a way to make that happen. <laughs> Imagine, right? Um, and I'll highlight at this point, you know, we're looking at two projects. So if you think about this top one here, this is our calculator unit test project, and this is our mm -hmm. library. But in reality, you know, projects get much more complicated. The graphs get deeper. And even this is a pretty small graph for most projects, uh, most solutions. If you imagine if we change the project down here at the bottom of the graph, any of these nodes, that would then need to be pushed up to all the referencing nodes. In this case, you know, we'd have many other projects that would be built. And so even though here the numbers are very small, as soon as you load up a large-ish solution, um, you, you know, that that really makes a big difference. So let's have a look right. now at how to turn on build acceleration because it's an opt-in feature. Um, I've created here a directory.build.props file. 
in the solution, <clears throat> excuse me, um, which is a, um, I'll show it on the disk here. It's a bit like a git ignore file or an editor config file in that it lets you set properties that are then picked up by all the projects in the solution. So we've got yeah. these two projects here, any properties we set in here will be picked up by these two projects. So this is a really easy way to apply changes across all of the projects in your solution in one place. Cool. Um, so it's a great fit for this. And if we look here, we've got Accelerate Builds in Visual Studio uh, via IntelliSense. So we'll select that and we've got True. Now let's save that. Uh, we have to build everything once because we've changed, essentially we've changed every project now. So if we build, everything will be built. And now we can go back and, and try our previous change. So let's make this uh, multiply now so that we have a change and build the solution. And here we go. Now we see we just built one and the other one was up to date and we're back to taking, you know, very, you know, back to the time it takes to build a single project. And again, if you had a real solution, this, this would drop the time from, you know, multiples of seconds down to a very small period of time. Yeah, that And could... you see this log here that uh, it's telling us that it accelerated that and copied two files in the process. That could wind up being a tremendous time saving if you have large projects, right? It, it, yeah, it really can. Uh, you know, we put this out in previews and encourage people to get some feedback. Um, mm -hmm. The testing that I did, I was testing in Orchard Core, which is a, a popular open source content management system and saw times dropping from 32 seconds down to seven seconds, uh, which is a really nice change. I mean, for me, that's the difference yeah. between getting distracted, you know, going and checking my email and, and losing the flow, losing my context and, you know, versus staying in the zone and being productive. Right. Um, people on Twitter were trying this out. I saw a report, someone said it was dropped from eight and a half seconds down to 3.1 seconds. Uh, another report from 26 down to 1.5 seconds. and. By far, my favorite report was from one customer on GitHub who had a time drop from over four minutes down to five seconds just wow. by turning on build acceleration. That's tremendous. Okay, couple questions. So the idea of doing the directory.build.props file seems pretty command liney. Is there a possibility of having a more visual way of turning this on and off? Like maybe from the options dialogue in the future? In the future, maybe. It's not there today. We don't have any kind of UI for editing these directory build props files. Uh, something we'd like to add, it's a matter of working out exactly how that might work. You can have multiples of these files. It could be a little complicated, but, um, you know, well, I would love to do that. It would be great. Um, but I think even longer term than that, in specifically on build acceleration, I would like it to be on by default. Um, mm -hmm. The, uh, you know, that would that would be the best case. Uh, the reason it's not on by default is there are certain projects for which simply copying files around on disk is not a suitable substitute for actually doing a build. So for example, a, an installer project, it has to take all of the things that it references and package them up into whatever the installer produces. Um, so that's exa okay. one example of a, of a project which build acceleration would not apply to. And, you know, we will, continue to add heuristics and so that it does the right thing by default. Uh, I've seen, uh, you know, very few reports of any kinds of issues with this. Mostly there are specific kinds of projects, like I say, installed projects for which it doesn't work. Um, but by all accounts, it seems if turning this on seems to work very well for most people. So it's something that we're investigating for a future release. So why wait? It's yeah, so easy I guess to try. My second question was, <laughs> is, is Right now it's at a project basis. So I was going to ask if there is a way to, is there a way right now to make it global? Can you put that directory.build.props file somewhere where Visual Studio will respect it for all projects or is it literally at the project level at the moment? Yeah, think of it at, as at, at the solution level. So this okay. travels around with your code. Um, that's, you know, if you were to try it and discover that there was some issue with it, you probably would want to not turn it on with that code base, or you could turn okay. it on at this level and turn it off for a specific project. That is definitely, you know, a likely outcome. If you did find a project for which it, it caused issues, uh, you could turn it on at the solution level, turn it off just in that one project. Um, and if you think you found an interesting case, find us on GitHub and let us know. Um, 
and I'll include a, a link to our repo on the show notes there. Yeah, and we've got in the show notes, we'll have uh, a link to some pretty nice docs that talk about it. Is there anything that's pretty cool? Any, what else do you want to say about it? Yeah, I mean, the docs, that's a great point. Um, whenever you see this message logged out here, there's a link here uh, to further information, um, which will take you to this page. Uh, this mm -hmm. is on the GitHub, so that link will also take you here. You can open up an issue here if you'd like to. Um, if you know, if, if this is all you remember from today, come here to these docs. All the information and more is here. You can see an example here where it will talk you through that. It will remind you how to uh, turn it on. Um, and we'll show you this, this uh, options dialog here too, which is something I think we can take a quick look at. Um, and once you've done that, it'll show you through steps of, of how to validate that it's working correctly. You, know, mm. you should be seeing these kinds of things. If you see this, this is why, and so on and so forth. So you can validate for yourself that it's working. Um, yeah, cool. So let's open the uh, options window. And we can see here, I've gone into the, it, it's pre-populated, you may need to navigate to it, but projects and solutions, SDK style projects. And over here we have up-to-date checks and you can see here the logging level. Now the default is none. I feel like minimal is a really nice default for anyone who's interested in build performance. So I'd encourage people, if you're interested in your build performance, turn on minimal by default. But today we'll just quickly turn on verbose and go and run this same scenario again. Uh, we'll change this to something else, build. And now you'll see that there's a lot more information here. This really explains oh. everything that Visual Studio is doing when your project, when it's trying to work out whether it needs to build your project. So up here you see, uh, for example, here it says input compile item calculator.cs is newer. So it knows that we've changed that file. This project needs to be built. And you can see if VS worked that out very quickly, 2.3 milliseconds. And down here, it worked out that the project that it's referencing, and you can read all this if you like, but the short version of this is that files that we were referencing from another project need to be copied. And then VS is able to copy those itself. And so we, we did that in you know six milliseconds. Um, whereas calling build would take, you know, probably hundreds to maybe thousands of milliseconds. And so build acceleration really can move the performance of your builds by, you know, several orders of magnitude, uh, in the general case. Um, but yeah, if, you know, if you were diagnosing your builds, this is a great feature to know about, turn this logging on and have a look, uh, leaving it on by default can maybe slow down your builds a little bit because it can produce a lot of information. But if you're trying mm -hmm. to understand. Uh, what's going on? This is a great place to uh, to, to come and find um, and and learn about builds in, inside of VS. So, can you use the information in there to discover if this is a solution that shouldn't have acceleration turned on? I think the easiest How way to understand know? if if look, so this will show you what happened and why it accelerated, but it won't tell you that uh, the. Um, that the output of that project was not created correctly. That's okay. something you'd have to know about that particular type of project. Um, so, you know, my advice would be turn this on and just go about your normal development. And if you see anything peculiar, try to understand whether turning build acceleration off would then res restore the previously uh, correct state. Um, okay. I don't think it's common, but that's, that's just the responsible, like the process of working out whether it's right for you. Right on. Cool. Wow, this is so cool. What a great feature. Thank you so it's much. It's been a lot for, of fun to work on it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for coming on the show and showing it to us. I'm, I'm going to start using it on all my projects now. And then I'll, I'll love to see when it makes a huge difference and when it doesn't. So particularly, I spend a lot of time these days building Maui projects um, and putting apps on, on phones. And those take a long time to build. So I'm anxious to see if how much improvement I can get out of this. We'll see. I'll let you know. <laughs> Do that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me on the show. It's been a lot of fun. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Start using it. Let Drew know what you think. And we will see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox.